You were searching for him. You you wanted him back in your life. And Mr. Lewis dropped him off. I won't get into all the circumstances surrounding that. But I think it was May 26 of 2020 when he came back to you. Here's what you said shortly thereafter on June 13th. And this is where I know there's a redeeming quality in you. There was a, a yearning to be a parent in helping. Here's the quote. It's far different from some of the other quotes I've heard, but I'll get to those. I want to get this little boy help. My heart hurts for him. He just needs help. That's a mother who wants to help, not hate her little boy. And then we fast forward to September 20 of 21. And I'm not going to review all of these statements. You and the members of our community have seen them up on the screen. September 16th of 2021. Piece of shit, kid. I won't use the, the words that precede that. Rotten kid. You indicated in terms of his life that you were the boss. And you went, it's my way now. I'll hang this kid. I hate him. September 21st of 2021. And I, I have to admit, this is a statement that says it all. We can talk about what happened in the bathroom and we can have a factual dispute about it. But it really comes down to this. Just whooped the effing maggot's ass. I look at this. This is not a maggot. It's a beautiful little boy. Your words shine the light on your intentions. October 25th, today, we went from, I hate him, I just whipped the maggot's ass, to, I love you, Elijah. All of that has a profound impact on my view of you as an individual. Your words that I've seen are damning in this case. They are cords of terror that rain down on this little boy. They are cords of terror that show, show, showed your knowledge, your awareness of the torture you were inflicting upon this little boy. You admit today, and you admit it on September 26th, in very clear words that you knowingly caused the death of Elijah. And again, I will not get tangled up in the minutia of what happened, whether it be in the bathroom or other places. The evidence is way beyond a reasonable doubt. It's beyond overwhelming that your hatred imploded into <laughs> neglect, beatings, starvation, facial and scalp injuries, blunt force trauma, pressure ulcers, hypothermia, confinement and isolation, leading to malnourishment and other acute conditions. Acute fentanyl intoxication caused this little boy's death. All those factors combined, and those are coming from the experts, the autopsy. It's an abhorrent, heinous, prolonged terror and torture of a five-year-old boy, inspired by pure hate. Your words give me a very close view an inside and up close personal view of your knowingly intent in this case. You knew exactly what you were doing to Elijah. You were killing him hour by hour, day by day, month by month. That's the crime I'm looking at. Now my obligation is to weigh the constitutional objectives of punishment, deterrence, and rehabilitation in the light of who you, Ms. Dolphin A, are as an individual. Um, there's been talk and there's been uh, pleadings and argument about the comparables in this case. And I've looked through all of them. Obviously, in terms of the State versus Marin case, I lived it for years, tried the case, and sentenced Ms. Marin to 45 years to life. The comparables, while they they give me some sense of how other judges have sentenced people in similar circumstances, but not the exact circumstances, because Attorney Faulkner, uh, Attorney Durand, and Attorney Hageman, uh, Attorney Jerusalem, you, you know 
that sentencing is an individual journey. And I take that very seriously. I have to know the individual who is before me, the crime he or she has committed, and then weigh those constitutional objectives against it. And that's what I'm doing uh, in this case. There is no doubt in my mind also on the other side of things from a mitigation standpoint, based on what I've read about you and heard about you today, that you suffered adult traumatic childhood experiences that impacted your life, both as an individual and uh, as a parent. Adverse childhood experiences. I've read about it in many cases, been trained on it, understand the study. There is no doubt that you were surviving through that. There's no doubt that it had an impact on your parenting of this little boy. There's no doubt that there was modeling for you that was horrific. There's no doubt that you suffered pain, trauma, abuse in your childhood. And for the most part, especially considering the, the studies and the research and the publications on that, I consider that uh, a mitigation factor that I've accounted for in my sentence. I've also accounted for what I view as uh, your remorse, your sorrow, and your acceptance of responsibility in this case by entering your plea of guilty. Those, in my view, are all mitigation factors. It is interesting, though, in terms of your adult childhood experiences, from everything I've heard, everything I read, uh, that modeling did not lead into your life in terms of your daughter since her birth in 2019. So we have very different pictures. We had Elijah in the basement, and then we had you parenting actively your daughter. Not exposed to what Elijah was being exposed to. So it's profoundly interesting, and I gave it a lot of thought of the dichotomy between these two children and how that was impacted by your childhood experiences. So I'm going to view that, though, primarily as mitigation in this particular case for you and based on what you told me about it personally today and through Attorney Gershon. The aggravating factors I've talked about already the primary aggravating factors in this case are your intent and your actions that just speak volumes about the terror and the trauma and the torture that this little boy was experiencing at your hands. And I am not in any way, in any way, absolving Mr. Staff of his role in that. He had hands on this child. He was there a lot of the time. Uh, his guilt has been born, and he is serving his sentence.